the end of days. The first sign shall appear in the heavens. Justice shall fall upon the world of men. The armies of light and shadow will clash across the fields of eternity. Ladies and gentlemen, the Primeval has arrived for the newest generation of consoles, bringing with it the highest fidelity any PlayStation or Xbox has yet to see. But as we all know, the Diablo experience isn't about graphical quality, it's about the gameplay. Obviously not much has changed being a PC port, but for those who may be interested and haven't played yet, this is a full video review. As any old or recent Diablo fan has come to know, the gameplay revolves around a few simple tenets. Slay evil, loot, upgrade, rinse, and repeat. Of course, there is much more to be had underneath the seemingly simple formula. Playing as a Nephilim, a sort of superhuman of the Diablo universe, you're a helpful sort of natural combatant, so of course, when you and the others find the world needs saving, you and the others, of course, come running. But the details of the story and why you're there don't really matter. What is important is that there are hundreds if not thousands if not hundreds of thousands of hell beasts to be slain and they drop tons of loot. The amount and quality of loot for the game on consoles is actually quite obscene. My character spent most of my playthrough equipped with nothing but rare and legendary quality pickups which is a far cry from, from the equipment my characters had on PC. One of the drawbacks that has accompanied the game since being ported to consoles is an issue with abilities. I have often found myself locked into specific abilities over others, and the same can be said for runes. Some abilities are truly just better than others, sadly, and this is coming from someone who really likes to rotate and have the option of using other abilities to keep the gameplay fresh and unique. As I've said, the tenets of the game are combat and buffing stats, but at their core is a somewhat complex menu system to make it all come together. Anyone who would look at the end game menus of Diablo would likely be put off by all of the options and items within a player's inventory. But even on console, with its circle-style main menu system, Blizzard keeps things easy. They make sure a campaign playthrough is the only option to play going into the game, and it's a great option, even though I feel later gameplay types could be unlocked sooner. Within the campaign, players learn to use the menu systems and acclimate over time, and they're introduced to things like gem systems and socketing gems into pieces of equipment. Still, menus are just an aside to what we're all here for. Fighting bosses, combating huge beasts, and slaying countless monsters in what the game calls massacres are oddly fun and motivating. They'll seem chaotic at times when you're surrounded by countless foes or hulking enemies, but you'll rarely feel out of control in those situations. The story for Diablo 3 never quite clicks, and even if it might for some players, it just doesn't fit entirely well with the gameplay. All of the characters present a world-ending theme through their actions and dialogue, but unless you've ramped up your difficulty way too high, chances are you'll never have the same sense of fear, terror, and catastrophe as you're mowing down hordes of enemies 
as you progress towards the end game. few things worth noting about the new story added by Reaper of Souls, Malthea, the antagonist of Act 5, is pretty badass. The story is a step in the right direction for the series, and raises a very curious question about the Nephilim that almost pokes fun at the game at the same time. Other than those very few things, the story is to be compared to a bag of cats, one in which most players will often skip through to get back to actually playing the game. Aside from the additional story content, the added gameplay from the campaign is wonderful and offers two new regions to be explored, one being a town and the other being a war-torn dimension, kind of a hell dimension, both of which bring a new host of enemies and side missions to enjoy. Once you've at last cleared the campaign, you'll have the ability to attend to bounties, which are displayed on a new world map, and the bounties randomize each time you start the adventure mode over. All that's needed for attending to a bounty is to warp to the given area and finish the objective that's displayed on screen. This can range from taking down a number of enemies, opening a cursed chest, taking out a specific enemy or boss, and much more. You'll often find that you warp to a region and have to find a specific cave or building to enter to begin said bounty, and then the slaying will be done within said cave or building. While the bounties add a nice incentive to grind and hunt for better equipment, their real reward comes from completing all five within a given region and seeing Tyrrell in town. Once you see the man, he'll give you an item that can be found in your gifts. These won't often give you a legendary like you see here in this video, but they give you Nephilim keys, or pieces of the keys, so that you may assemble them to open Nephilim rifts in each town or hidden camp. It's in Nephilim Rifts that you'll find the most reward, whether that's in Legendary Drops or EXP.
As for the score, I give the game an 8.9 out of 10. I really like the endless combat and looting potential of Diablo 3 on consoles, and the Loot 2.0 system that's present on consoles that gives you almost seemingly endless legendary and rare item drops that you can equip with your character. Sadly, one of the things I didn't get to include in this video were nemesis enemies. Nemesis enemies are pure awesome. They're enemies that jump from your friend's games over to your game after they've gotten done killing your friend on PSN. And once they're in your game, they stand to do you in as well. And if they do so, they'll jump to yet again another friend's game, and they can keep growing stronger and stronger. These fights are often signaled by your controller shaking, almost representing the earth itself shaking, and trumpets sounding, and suddenly a, a portal appears which the beast jumps out of. It's pretty ridiculous, and I hope you get to see it. Additionally, four-player co-op is awesome to hear about and to have on a single screen, especially on brand new consoles. You rarely see something like that. The only other game I can really think of that has that is Rayman Legends. Also, Adventure Mode offers a lot more potential in the endgame that Diablo 3 just needed. Things I disliked, as I mentioned, was locking into abilities. I often just felt that I was too tuned to certain abilities where I just couldn't switch out of them, or if I did, I just wouldn't be getting the same results. And of course, the story. The story just does not deliver on the on what the gameplay can deliver on for Diablo 3. I've been Scott Diesner for this Middle of Nowhere Gaming video review. And before I go, I'd just like to give a quick shout out and thanks to my fellow writer and friend, Patrick Garrity, who helped me gather footage for this video. He also helped by writing his opinion of the game for the more in-depth written review you can find below. Remember to keep it tuned to Middle of Nowhere Gaming for more news, and remember, Mongols, keep gaming.